So uh, my name is Yang, and, and I'm now a graduate student in Binjun's lab at UCSD. It is my pleasure today to share uh, our recent single cell high c method called Droplet High C. So I did mention this method uh, during the annual meeting in Boston last year, uh, but I promise you that uh, about the fun parts of this method, including what is, what, what are the special things that uh, we can do with the single cell high c data. So I'm sure that uh, many of us are familiar with the high c method, uh, which has been, which has been broadly used. Uh, to uh, study the chromatin organization in cell slide or tissue samples. Uh, but uh, this method requires uh, a large number of cells applied high C on uh, complex tissues. The information that we got is always represent a population average, just like uh, the imaging results I show here. But the good thing is that our community with different types of singles and high C method in the past few years. So this method uh, include the low throughput method like single cell high C or deep C, uh, and also like the high throughput combinatorial indexing method like sky high C comprehensive measurement. So despite the performance, the applicants, uh, uh, including like the TDS experimental procedure or the requirements of some uh, expensive machine labor, so that it can be easily adapted by different. So in response, we managed to adapt the high C protocol with the widely available 10x a single cell ataxy platform. So in our design, after the restriction enzyme digestion ligations, we use the TN5 to perform the chromatin fragmentation instead of using another like restriction enzymes. And then we follow the 10x microfluidics to carry out molecular barcoding. So we term this method a droplet high C, which allows the measurement of chromatin structure in tens of thousands of single cells within a short time. So compared to some of the previous method, a job at high C has the shortest sample to library times. It costs uh, less than 50 cents per cell and can be easily executed by a single person to recover up to 20,000 of cells within one experiment. So the initial validation of our method with a mouse and human cell line mix demonstrate that we have a comparable collection rate of this method uh, uh, to the common tenex reactions. And then by mixing as we commonly use human cell line and then use the high gas to perform cross ring, we show that the droplet high C uh, can uh, clearly distinguish different cell type identities, including like uh, a very small cell cycle populations. And also on the pseudo bulk a compartment score, uh, you can see that the aggregated uh, droplet high C profiles closely mimic uh, the in-house generated uh, in situ high C reference or the reference uh, from the 4D and data portals. After uh, validation on cell lines, we then move to uh, the adult mouse cortex, which, as you know, is a highly heterogeneous but contains a lot of like well characterized cell types. And then we carry out two replicates of drop at high C on mouse cortex. Uh, but the problem after we get the data uh, is that with only a chromatin interaction data, it is quite challenging to annotate the cell type. But it was also uh, previously reported that the highly expressed genes tend to have more frequent interaction within the gene body region, and it's likely to form the structure called a gene-associated domain or GAD. So this means that if we can, uh, uh, if we try to calculate a GAD score for a genes, uh, which represents uh, the sum of the interaction within a gene body, we can get an approximation uh, to the gene expression level. So to cross our single cell a high C data, we uh, first calculate the single cell GAD score for each genes. And with this, we can convert the cell by chromatin interaction matrix into the cell by GAD score matrix, which enables the co-embedding with single nucleus RNA reference uh, to carry out accurate uh, annotations. So with this strategy, we are able to resolve 15 cell uh, subclasses from the mouse cortex drop at high C data, including five and then neurons, a seven gross hematogenic neurons, and three garbagic neurons. So focusing on six uh, subclass with similar cell number, uh, we just wonder whether Robert high C can reveal the hierarchical chromatin structure uh, on the cell type levels. 
So we're able to achieve this goal of showing the contact site on the whole chromosome at 100 at kilobit resolutions at the domain structure at 25 kilobit resolution as well as the chromosome loop uh, on 10 kilobit resolution uh, surrounding like the gene, the surrounding the region uh, uh, for the gene site B2s, which is active specifically uh, in the in in the excitatory neuron subtype, for example, like the layer six IT neurons. And you can see that like the activity of this gene is supported with the public uh, single cell, uh, single nucleus RNA seq, or like epigenetic data. So with this with this data, we can uh, definitely uh, do some research on uh, cell type specific compartment domains or loop. Uh, but I want I just want want to mention uh, the chromatin halves that remains uh, relatively underexplored in the high C data. So chromosome half here is defined as the genomic beings involve multiple uh, contacts with a significantly higher frequency. So with the chromosome half uh, information, we can calculate at this half uh, the enrichment of cell type specific regulatory element, for example, like super enhancer here is calculated from the single nucleus ataxic data or the enrichment of the marker genes defined uh, uh, from the single nucleus RNA modality uh, uh, from the multiomic data set. But we found that the, en the enrichment, en enrichment of CBNS or marker genes from the same cell type in which the hub is defined have a stronger association with the hub compared to those from a different cell types, as you can show here. So suggesting that the multi-way context clone and hub are actively associated with the cell type function in the mouse brain. So a quick summary of my first part. Uh, we have developed a 10x base, a droplet high C, which can be used to explore the cell type specific chromatin interactions. So, by identifying the chromatin hub on the 10 kilo base resolutions, we show that these hub are associated with the cell type specific marker genes as well as the super enhancers. So, this evidence suggests that our method is a convenient yet powerful one, and therefore we decide to use this method to explore more about the variation in chromatin structures. So uh, here, when we talk about chromatin structure, uh, most of the most of the time we think about a compartment, we think about a domain or loop. Uh, but when we talk about variation in chromatin structure in other fields, for example, like cancer biology, uh, it is more commonly referring uh, to, for example, copy number variation and structural variation, which are frequently observed in cancer cells, as I show here uh, for glioblastoma cell uh, type. And more importantly is that this variation is highly heterogeneous and is different from cell to cells. So piloted by a group of researchers from the community, including Dr. Fong Yu and Dr. Jesse Dixon, people have started to appreciate uh, the high C uh, to study the structural variation in tumor samples. And I want to bring up two more extreme variations. Uh, both of them involve a very high cop, high involves uh, a highly amplified uh, genomic regions, but one is on uh, the chromosome and called HSR because of its heavily uh, stand region pattern when you try to inspect it under the microscope. And the other one is this outside of the linear genome and it's called the extra chromosomal DNA or ECDNA. So both these two variations can result from the DNA damage and chromosome lipses and can be transformed into one or the other under specific conditions. So the reason that uh, uh, I want to focus on ECDNA is because it have a very obvious uh, stripe a pattern across genome on the high C context map, so indicating that this interaction is very global and prevalent. So based on this feature, previous study, for example, like this one, have calculated metrics, including like the copy number normalized a chance interaction frequency uh, that can be used to detect ECDNA uh, from the high C data compared to the normal cell line. So to start to study structural variation in single cell, I would perform drawback high C on two colorectal cancer cell like the colos ratio HSI and double minus, which carry uh, both of them carry a highly amplified region from chromosome eight containing mixed gene as HSR or as ECDNA respectively. So first from the context map, I think you can see that at least the, the, the same region in these two a cell line shows the very same genome-wide interaction patterns. And if we calculate like like the chance uh, to the copy number normalized chance in frequency as shown in previous paper, it turns out that both the double minus and HSR have a uh, very high score. So therefore leaving a question here is that uh, how can we separate these two type of structural variation uh, based on uh, only the high C data? So to answer this question, we began to compare the different property in, in the interaction using both the pseudo bulk and single cell data. 
So the first things we notice is that when plotting the interaction hotspot out, you can see that compared to ECDNA, which is seen in blue colors, uh, uh, the HSR, which is seen in orange color, has a more concentrated uh, chance interaction distributions. So we use a measurement called Hub Index to recapitulate this distribution in the single cells. So besides Hub Index, we also found that there's also many differences, including uh, the copy number level and also the number of chains versus cis uh, contact spins. So based on uh, these three features and also based on the context map, uh, we designed and chained a CNN-based ECDNA caller with the help from Winfus Group uh, to not only classify whether a one megabase genomic beans belongs to uh, either ECDNA or HSR, but can also predict the cells uh, which contain these uh, variations. So we use the Colo uh, 320 job at high C data as the chaining and validation data set. So in the chaining data set, we classify the mid regions uh, uh, in all uh, the double minor cells as ECDN positive and uh, the same region as HSR positive in all the HSR cells. And you can see that the prediction the validata, in the validation data set show here, uh, 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 show that like our ECDNA colors can accurately separate uh, the ECDNA and HSR. So now we have a, a job at high C, a single cell, a high C method, and also like uh, the ECDNA caller to identify ECDNA. We already have a set of tools that can uh, uh, be used in identifying uh, these chromatin variations in a heterogeneous systems. So it is known that the ECDNA can reintegrate into the genome or reform under drug selections. So with the help uh, from Brad Taylor's in Frank Finale lab, we're bringing a well-characterized ECDNA systems uh, based on the GBM-39 cell lines, where uh, the EGFR gene exists on ECDNA. And when we treat the cell with aloptinib, which is an EGFR inhibitor, the ECDNA will diminish. So we then carry out a droplet high C on uh, the GBM-39 before and after treatments, and we cross her with Higashi, and you can see that this reviews two major populations represent at each condition with a small population of cells uh, being shared in the middle. And like in, in these two uh, conditions, we can also resolve different subtype uh, or subcluster within uh, 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 the data. <clears throat> so by using our ECDNA colors, we can identify uh, first is the EGFA, EGFI ECDNA in the majority of cells before treatments which serve as a ground choose. And we can also identify a small number of cells with ECDNA carrying the MIG genes. We also find a rare ECDNA on chromosome 18, although we didn't find any of the known oncogenes on these ECDNAs. So after treatment, uh, uh, the EGFR ECDNA, you can see that it is totally gone, uh, uh, and the proportion of EC makeup increases. And we notice that like there's a new ECDNA on the chromosome 12, which is contains the MDM2 that is never reported before. So this suggests that like the aeroptony uh, can not only select existing ECDNA, but can also drive uh, the generation of new ECDNA. And this also suggests that um, the single cell high C data can uh, largely complement uh, the previous imaging-based study on ECDNA because uh, the sequencing method itself is less biased and around for the discovery of new ECDNA species. So uh, with this data, we further analyze the existence of ECDNA either individually or in combinations. So it is clear that almost all the cell before treatment is with ECDNA, while the small population share between this condition contain ECMIC, uh, possibly indicating that the gain of ECMIC uh, can give gross benefits to GBM-39s uh, when the EGFR got inhibited. And the MD MDM2 ECDNA uh, uh, are exclusive uh, in the main, uh, main group of cells after treatments. And all these ECDNA prediction and combination can be validated uh, by the single molecule fish, uh, indicating that the prediction results from our ECDNA color is accurate. So we next focus on uh, uh, the shared ECMIC before and after treatments. So on the pseudobog level, it seems that like this ECDNA have a very clear boundary, uh, while uh, the boundary becomes more fuzzy after the drug treatments. Uh, so this variation actually reflects the heterogeneity in the single cell level. As you can see that when, when we plot the local interactions within each cells out, uh, both the lens and also even the internal structure become different uh, uh, in the GBM-39 after treatments. 
So to validate it, we perform the fish, uh, single quality fish using like probes targeting in the five prime or three prime make regions. And we can see that the, this, this, this proportion of the five prime and three prime signals uh, is a feature of the GVM 39 ER, which is uh, like the GVM 39 ER after treatment, but not in the group before treatments. So further validating that this uh, drug treatment process can shape the structure of existing ECDNA, uh, possibly through a chromosomalysis process. So to this point, I hope that I, I have uh, uh, convinced you that droplet crisis uh, have unique power in identifying the chromatin uh, alteration in single cancer cells. So with the development of the deep learning based ECDNA color, we can accurately uh, separate a two similar structure uh, variation and a combination of sequencing tools in prediction models allowed us to probe the dynamics of ECDNA, mo of, of ECDNA in the uh, drug treatment systems. So the next question we have is how does this variations uh, in the ECDNA uh, structure related to gene regulation? So the best way to answer this question uh, requires us to capture both uh, the chromatin structure information and also the RNA information in the same single cells. So we further extend the droplet HiC to the 10x multium reaction kit and enable uh, the joint analysis of HiC along with the transcriptome information. So we call this method pair HiCs. So with pair HiC, we can uh, now revisit uh, the GBM39 system and study the EC mix structure before and after treatments. So now besides, for example, the chromatin structure shown here, we can also compare the difference in the expression level of genes on ECDNA. Uh, for example, the inclusion of PCAT1 onto the ECDNA after the treatment is correlated with the elevation uh, in the RNA levels. We also want to mention that although like all these genes uh, reside on the ECDNA, the expression level are not constantly uh, very high. So by classifying uh, these ECDNA genes into three different groups based on their position on ECDNA, we show that all these genes react uh, differently uh, when uh, they are all on the highly amplified ECDNA. So in general, you can see that a high, the higher copy number can contribute to a higher uh, gene expression level. But this increase is not consistent across uh, genes at the different regions. So suggesting that uh, there's maybe a more delicate regulatory mechanism besides the copy number uh, to maintain the expression level uh, of genes on these special structural variations. So in this last part, uh, I briefly introduced the multiomic version of Robert High C and use uh, this assay to couple the gene expression with uh, ECDNA copy number in GBM39 systems. So through uh, the whole introduction, I hope that I have convinced you that uh, our method, a job at high C, is a highly efficient tool in not only uh, reviewing the cell type specific chromatin interactions, but also shows the, its unique power in interrogating the copy number and structural variations. To combine with the deep learning based model, we can show that the dynamic of ECDNA in single cell under drug selections, uh, which is largely unknown before. And finally, by including a new RNA modality, we provide an opportunity to study how the ECDNA can, can contribute to gene selections. So I would like to stop here and take question. Uh, but before that, I want to acknowledge Beans and Lei, uh, who is the leading author and the developer of these amazing techniques. Uh, Brad and Johnny also contribute their great expertise in uh, either securing the mouse cortex samples or in the cancer studies. And also special thanks to Dr. Ming Hu, uh, which contribute uh, to the analysis of chromatin hub as well as the ECDNA colors. And uh, I don't think I have time to go over the uh, uh, primary tumor sample today, but we did get like a primary glioblastoma from Clark Chance and also like a bone marrow cancer sample from the Bajor lab. And uh, if you're interested, you can like check out check out our manuscript to know more. And yeah, thanks everyone.